We all know that Boeing aircraft are using yokes and Airbuses are using side sticks, but could Airbus be about to change the way that their side sticks are actually working? And if they are, why would they do that? And what will this mean for the side sticks that are already in use? Stay tuned. In a couple of previous videos, I've talked about how Boeing and Airbus pilots tend to tease each other a little bit about how their flight controls are working. That normally includes Boeing pilots pointing out that they really like how they can feel what the aircraft is doing and the Airbus pilots responding with that they have a handy little table that they can put a little kitchen cloth on top. Now, I will look at these and other differences more closely in a minute in this video, but first it's worth looking at where these two different technologies actually came from and why. In a recent video, I looked at the Airbus A300, which is a gorgeous aircraft, by the way. But it was also the aircraft that led to the creation of Airbus itself. It first flew back in 1972, and its pilots were controlling it with yokes, just like the pilots of all other airliners were doing at the time. And even though later versions of that A300 added some fly-by-wire technology for its secondary flight controls, the aircraft still stuck with a yoke until the production ended, which was actually quite recently. Airbus actually first introduced side sticks and full fly-by-wire to its airliners with the Airbus A320 family, which first flew 15 years after the Airbus 300 in 1987. But while the A320 was the first airliner with side sticks, it was far from the first aircraft to use side sticks, or even fly-by-wire for that matter. A number of military jets have used these technologies either in testing or actually operationally going back all the way to the 1960s. The first operational aircraft to use a side stick was the F-16 fighter, which first flew nearly 50 years ago in 1974. And fly-by-wire aircraft go much further back than even that, with many sources crediting the Canadian CF-105 Arrow as the first aircraft to use it, although it, it actually never entered service. Even in the airline world, the A320 wasn't the first airliner to use fly-by-wire technology. That honor goes to the awesome Concorde, but of course, it didn't have a side stick, they used those famous bicycle style yokes instead. It should probably be mentioned that also there are some smaller aircraft that use side sticks without having fly-by-wire. That's like the Cirrus SR20 and the SR22 family, as well as their Vision Jet actually, which is super cool. But in those planes, the side sticks basically operate like a side-mounted yoke, moved by one hand instead of by two. Now, Many people who discuss the pros and cons of Boeing versus Airbus tend to group side sticks and fly-by-wire together, which is actually quite a bit misleading. And the same is true when we look at military aircraft. Originally, fly-by-wire was attractive to use in military designs because it made it possible to fly aircraft that were aerodynamically unstable. Since all the pilot's control inputs will have to go through a computer, then be modulated and then pushed out to the flight controls. Fly-by-wire makes it easier to design fighter jets who are really agile, or aircraft that have really unusual shapes, like the F-117 or the B-2 stealth bomber. Even the space shuttle would have been completely unflyable without advanced computers using fly-by-wire systems. The situation is quite different though when we talk about airliners. All airliners, including the Concorde with its unique delta wing, are aerodynamically stable and would therefore be possible to control conventionally. So instead, fly-by-wire is useful for airliners because it helps them to operate more consistently over wider center of gravity limits and it also enhances safety and reduces weight. With the use of fly-by-wire, it's also easier to make aircraft variants of the same family handled more similar to each other, which helps in training and makes it easier for a pilot to jump between, for example, an Airbus A318, A319, 320, 321, with just minimal difference training. But probably the most attractive aspect of fly-by-wire for airliners is the flight envelope protection. Through that, the fly-by-wire helps make sure that the aircraft is operated within safe flight parameters, like in pitch, roll and in airspeed. And this greatly helps prevent serious aircraft upsets and stalls from happening. That's really the main reasons why both Airbus and Boeing are now using fly-by-wire in their latest aircraft. In the last three decades, Boeing has introduced two clean sheet aircraft, the 777 and the 787, and both of them are full fly-by-wire designs. 
Now to be clear, there are some differences between the ways that Airbus and Boeing implement their flight envelope protections, but I'm not gonna go into that here. If you want to hear more about that, then let me know in the comments. But beyond fly-by-wire, where both of them now clearly agree with each other, the Boeing versus Airbus debate is really all about the different flight controls they're using. But what a lot of people tend to forget is that Boeing's choice of using yokes rather than side sticks actually wasn't always a given. In the late 1980s and early 90s, when Boeing was developing the 777, they were also working on something called the 7J7, which I've covered in previous videos. The most distinctive feature of that aircraft design was its open fan engine configuration, but Boeing's conceptual design for the 7J7 cockpit was pretty much as interesting as that. One of the interesting things was that they featured an odd center-mounted stick setup, while another one actually had a more familiar-looking side stick mounted. Now, I will come back to all of the benefits that will come with having side sticks soon, but Boeing was really considering this for that design. And of course, the 7J7 never came off the drawing board, but a lot of the design work that went into materials and other technologies that, you know, when they were working on it, actually later ended up in the much bigger 777. So it wouldn't have been a leap to think that the 777 could have been developed with a side stick as well, if history had just taken a slightly different turn. In the end, Boeing decided to stay with their traditional yokes, in part to keep its layout similar to aircraft like the 757, the 767 and even the 737. But what did Boeing actually give up with that choice? What were the reasons that Airbus had already made their switch over to side sticks at that point? Well, it's really a mix of several things, including ergonomics for the pilots and some more general practical factors. For example, from a pure design perspective, it's just so much easier to install a pair of side sticks in a cockpit than it is to install two big jokes. Another huge reason, which I've actually already mentioned a little bit, is the weight. In the Boeing 777 and the 787, who are both fly-by-wire, their yokes are still interconnected mechanically, making them move together, and this is a bulky and very heavy mechanism. By comparison, each side stick is just basically a box filled with the mechanical parts and wiring, and with the side sticks mounted on top of it, requiring much less space and weight. This also makes side sticks much easier to install, and also easier to service and replace. For the pilots, in terms of ergonomics, not having a yoke that moves back and forth in front of us means that our flight displays can be put closer to us. And that allows us to see them a bit better with nothing in the way, but it also enables them to be turned into touch screens. Airbus have already done this with the Airbus A350, and like I said before, the simple mechanics of the side stick also makes them much lighter. According to Collins Aerospace, using side sticks in a cockpit represents an 80% weight reduction compared to a similar setup with yokes. But if Airbus already have side sticks and they are so great, then why mess with them? Well, I'll explain all of that after this. Just as knowing more about aviation can help you to fight your fear of flying, therapy can be another great tool, and that's where today's sponsor BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is a company aiming to revolutionize therapy with the help of technology, and I have actually personally been using them lately. I had a really nice chat with my therapist about why I found myself procrastinating, especially before starting to make longer scripts. And she gave me some really great tools to fight that, like giving myself small rewards after finishing tasks, and also dividing the larger tasks into smaller chunks, which was really helpful. Now, it's super easy to sign up. Just click on the link here below, fill out a short questionnaire, and then BetterHelp will match you with a licensed professional in as little as 48 hours. Now, you can contact your therapist through either video calls, messaging, or by phone, making it super easy and convenient, and it will help avoid those awkward waiting rooms. To start improving your mental health today, then use the link here below, which is betterhelp.com slash mentor now, and that will give you a fantastic 10% discount on your first month of therapy. Thank you, BetterHelp. Now back to the video. Just over a year ago, I made a video where I examined the possibility that Boeing's next airliner might actually have side sticks instead of yokes, and the reason for this is the introduction of something called active side sticks. 
In addition to transmitting pilot inputs to the aircraft systems, these active side sticks also include servo mechanisms, who moves the sticks and exert force against the pilot inputs. This means that even though the two sticks have still no mechanical interlink between them, it's possible to program them so that if one pilot moves their stick, the other stick moves as well, in a corresponding way, and that is a really, really big deal. Because there are actually a couple of real criticisms of the side sticks that are in use today, and one of them is precisely this lack of feedback between the left and right side stick, especially during an upset when both pilots might start to make inputs at the same time. Now, if that happens, the Airbus, for example, have a loud audio warning announcing dual input. Dual input. Dual but input. unfortunately, one of the first human senses that are degraded under severe stress is hearing. Another criticism involves the aircraft's trim, or more accurately, the lack of feedback from the trim. You see, normally, in normal control law, Airbus aircraft trim their horizontal stabilizer automatically, reacting to pitch control inputs from the pilots to neutralize the trim forces. But under certain circumstances, when some systems or sensors don't work as they should, the aircraft could find itself in a degraded control law, like direct law. In direct law, the aircraft will no longer trim itself, and in that scenario, the standard side sticks don't give any real feedback to the pilots to let them know that the aircraft is out of trim. Now, I should make it clear here that Airbus has designed its systems with multiple safeguards. Those include that warning system that I just mentioned, and on top of that, there are also visual warnings, including a message on the primary flight display that will tell the pilots of the need to trim manually, if it would be needed. But sadly, over on the Mentor Pilot channel, which is my second channel, I have featured several cases when the high workload of the flight crew made them miss some or even all of these crucial warnings. Air France 447 immediately comes to mind, but it's far from the only one. Now, Airbus have been tweaking and improving its warning systems over the years, including after the Air France 447 tragedy, but I just released another video showing a severe upset involving an S7 Airlines A321neo, which also highlighted the same issues, and that one happened quite recently. Active side sticks could potentially solve these and some other problems, which I'll get back to, but here it might be fair to ask, why haven't we seen these active side sticks until now? I mean, these systems sound very similar to the kind of force feedback joysticks which were around when I was a teenager. Well, one of the explanations has to do with the origins of the side stick. You see, older military jets with side sticks were predominantly single seaters. The F-16 had a two-seat version, but actually its side stick doesn't move that much. It's primarily responding to pressure input, so there isn't really much motion to feedback to the other pilot. But a simpler explanation to why we haven't seen them in airliners yet is purely technological. The first gaming joysticks with force feedback went on sale in 1997, and they were fairly basic. So obviously, the technology definitely wasn't there yet when Airbus was developing the Airbus A320 back in the 1980s. And while we, Boeing pilots, sometimes tease our Airbus colleagues and call their side sticks joysticks, these devices clearly need to be several orders of magnitude more robust and reliable than anything that has to do with computer gaming. But never mind that. The important thing is that active side sticks have now finally arrived. Today, there are three aircraft designs that come with them as standard, and the first one that was released was a business jet, the Gulfstream G500 and the 600, with more variants of Gulfstream jets following. Next up came a military aircraft, the Embraer KC-390, which is a twin-engine cargo jet the size of a C-130 Hercules. The third aircraft is an airliner, although it might be a while until we actually will see it carrying passengers. This is the Russian Irkut MS-21, or MC-21. Until Russia's escalation of the war in Ukraine in 2022, the MS-21 was stated to become the world's first airliner to enter service with active side sticks. But like practically all of the avionics, other electrics and systems in that aircraft, those side sticks weren't actually made in Russia. So with the current sanctions, we will have to wait and see what kind of system this plane actually will enter service with, when or if it does. In any case, that amount of re-engineering could take many years to do for the Russians, so is there a possibility that we could see another airliner enter service with active side sticks before the MS-21? Well, 
As I've explained before in many of my other videos, Airbus and Boeing probably won't launch any all new aircraft in the next few years. But what if active side sticks came in as a retrofit for existing aircraft with conventional side sticks? As I've said before, the fact that side sticks are basically a piece of electronic equipment means that, like with all other electronics, newer and better versions of them can be put in to replace them, and it wouldn't be unprecedented either. The first Airbus A320s had cathode ray tubes or CRTs for their flight displays, like those old heavy televisions that we had back in the day. And the fly-by-wire and flight management computers of those first A320s were running on banks of multiple redundant Intel processors whose design dates back to 1982. Both of these have obviously long since been replaced by newer and much better stuff. The side sticks are configured as Line Replaceable Units, or LRUs, and as their name suggests, they are designed for easy removal and replacement. Again, that's one of the reasons why having side sticks instead of yokes actually makes sense. However, to upgrade to active side sticks, it would likely be necessary to update more aircraft systems as well, but those other systems also tend to be built for those type of upgrades. And of course, the new sticks need to have servos built into their boxes. This could potentially make the LRUs bigger, but given the advancement and downsizing in electronics since the 1980s, I would hazard to guess that that's not really a big problem. If active side sticks can fit into a Gulfstream, they should definitely fit into the famously roomy cockpit of an A320 as well. Active side sticks would offer three distinct advantages over existing designs. I've already mentioned two of them. Firstly, of course, letting the pilots know that the other pilot is making inputs and quickly figure out which one should be flying the plane. And secondly, they would let the pilot know that the aircraft is out of trim in a degraded control law situation. And the third benefit would apply when the aircraft is flying on autopilot. Then, the movements of the stick corresponds to the actual deflection of the control surfaces, serving as a visual cue to the pilots, warning them if something unusual is about to start happening. Obviously, all three of these advantages of active sticks are things that Boeing pilots already have thanks to their yokes. But active side sticks would also have all of the other benefits that Boeing's cockpits don't have, like the lower system weight, easier maintenance and replacement, better ergonomics and of course that famous tray table. At this point, I should also point out that introducing this feedback between the inputs the pilots and the autopilot are doing isn't going to solve every control and input problem. In an incident that happened back in April of 2022, the pilots of an Air France widebody flying from New York to Paris ended up fighting each other's control inputs during the approach and the following go-around, not realizing that they were both inputting on the controls. But these pilots were not flying an Airbus with side sticks, they were actually flying a Boeing 777, a fly-by-wire jet with yokes. Now the final report on this incident isn't out yet, but in the press release the French investigating authority, BEA, indicated that the two pilots managed to split or desynchronize the yokes as they were inputting on the controls. Now I will probably look more closely into this event in you know, in a video when the final report comes, but basically it is possible for the mechanically linked yokes on the 777 and the 787 to split this way in case one of the yoke is being jammed. With enough force, they can then desynchronize and when they do, the fly-by-wire computers will average out the inputs, just like the Airbus computers will average out conflicting inputs from the side sticks. And speaking of jammed jokes, I've already done a video involving a very similar issue but with a jammed side stick in a military Airbus A330 where a bit of feedback between the two side sticks would have definitely made a huge difference. Now, even if retrofitting an existing aircraft with active side sticks is technically possible, another question here is, is it even practical or is it doable? But to answer that, it might help if we know who makes the active side sticks today. The active side sticks for the Gulfstream's business jets and for the Embraer's KC-390 are reportedly made by BAE Systems. The active side sticks for the Irkut MS-21 are made by Ratier Figiac, a French-based division of Collins Aerospace, which is an American company that belongs to RTX, also known until a few months ago as Raytheon. And do you know who else France-based Ratier Figiac makes side sticks for? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's someone who assembles big aircraft in France. 
That's right. The supplier that Airbus sources its existing side sticks from is a company that is already making active side sticks. And that's frankly not a huge surprise, since visually at least the Airbus and the Irkut side sticks are very similar. Now, I am not an engineer nor a lawyer, so I don't know if there may be any intellectual property issues with Ratiefi Jack or Collins Aerospace selling another version of a product that they've already developed for Irkut to Airbus. But I think it is reasonable to assume that the MS-21 active side stick design is broadly just an evolution of the Airbus all passive side stick. So I would be very surprised if someone hasn't already worked out what it takes to develop a version of the latest active systems for Airbus. Now, I would be super interested to hear from Airbus pilots about this in the comments below. What, what do you guys think? I mean, active side sticks seems to be eliminating all of the weaknesses of the previous systems, leaving behind only the advantages that you guys brag to us about. Now, I realize that many standard operating procedures have been designed to guard against the lack of feedback between the two existing sticks and will likely need to be adjusted or updated. And of course, there will also be extensive training needed for a flight control update like this. But from where I'm sitting, I can only see positives in introducing this technology. Now, I haven't been able to confirm who makes the passive side sticks for newer Airbus A220. Perhaps that would be an easier retrofit to implement since the existing pool of A220 pilots is comparatively small and Airbus's production of the A220 is much slower than this for the A320. Or maybe Airbus could launch an active side stick upgrade for the A350 and then later bring it to the single aisles. I don't know, it sounds like a possible idea. Now, you can support my team and I by sending a super thanks after this video or buying a t-shirt but if you really want to take part in the creation of these videos and give feedback and also hang out with me on Zoom Hangout, well then you should join my awesome Patreon crew. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.